but the, the Sahel in Africa is considered as very vital for France. Uh, on, the, on the same time, the involvement in Afghanistan was also to be on the side of the Americans after not being on their side in 2003. So it was like more a diplomatic of a diplomatic issue. Uh, but the present Africa is older, is more relevant for the French. I guess a debate will be put up on the table, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not the day after, but it will be soon be. France has been expelled from Africa, but will it make another attempt to return? This might make you question France's boldness, yet it has devised a 10-year plan to regain control over the continent. Despite African leaders being unwilling to receive even a single French official, France's ambitions remain high. Traoré has responded by giving France a reality check. However, the exact intentions of France remain unclear, as their plan appears impractical. Does this imply that France's true aim is to simply provoke the African nations? Let's find out. I have asked the Defense Minister, Sebastien Lecornu, and the Joint Chief of Staff to rethink by next autumn the entirety of our military presence in Africa. C'est une nécessité stratégique. It's a strategic necessity because we need deployments that are less entrenched and less exposed to build a lasting and closer cooperation with African armies and to rebuild our training capabilities here and there. Recently, Mr. General Francois Lecointre, a former French general and chief of staff of the French army, made headlines with his audacious proposal for a renewed European commitment to Africa. He outlined a 10-year plan to control Africa, a notion that has caused strong reactions, especially from nations like Burkina Faso, Mali, and Chad, which have successfully expelled foreign forces and established their sovereignty. What are the specifics of General Lecointre's 10-year plan, and why has it sparked such outrage? General Francois Lecointre's 10-year plan involves a strategic reinvasion of Africa, focusing on the Sahel region. This proposal suggests that European forces would interfere under the pretext of combating terrorism and stabilizing the region. However, critics argue that this plan is a thinly veiled attempt to reassert control over Africa's rich resources and strategic locations. The plan disregards the sovereignty of African nations and overlooks their capacity to manage their affairs. The arrogance of assuming that European intervention is necessary or welcomed has sparked outrage among African leaders and citizens alike. The specifics of Lecointre's plan include deploying European troops to secure key areas, establishing military bases, and implementing a governance framework that ostensibly aims to restore order. The proposal outlines a series of economic reforms to be supervised by European experts, focusing on sectors such as mining, agriculture, and infrastructure. These reforms, while presented as beneficial, are seen as mechanisms to ensure continued European control over Africa's valuable resources. The plan also includes provisions for training local security forces, which critics argue would effectively turn them into proxies serving European interests. Many African leaders view this as a pretext for deeper geopolitical and economic motives. The Sahel is rich in resources such as gold, uranium, and oil, making it a highly desirable region for external powers. The notion that European intervention is the only solution to regional instability disregards the efforts and capabilities of African nations to address their challenges. It also ignores the historical context of foreign interventions, exacerbating rather than resolving conflicts. Lecointre's proposal has been met with fierce criticism from African leaders and citizens alike. They see it as a blatant attempt to undermine their sovereignty and independence. The memory of colonial exploitation remains fresh, and any suggestion of reinvasion triggers a strong response. The arrogance embedded in the plan, assuming that African nations are incapable of self-governance and need European oversight, is deeply insulting. This has caused a renewed sense of unity and resistance among African countries, determined to protect their hard-won independence. The implications of Lecointre's proposal extend beyond immediate political and military concerns. It threatens to destabilize the region further, as any foreign intervention is likely to provoke local resistance and potentially increase support for extremist groups. The economic ramifications are also significant, 
with fears that the proposed reforms would lead to increased exploitation of resources, benefiting European corporations at the expense of local economies. This could exacerbate poverty and inequality, fueling further unrest. President Ibrahim Traoré of Burkina Faso has been particularly vocal in his opposition to this proposal. His response highlights the resilience and determination of African nations to defend their independence. So, how has President Ibrahim Traoré of Burkina Faso responded to General Lecointre's proposal? Vigo, well, yes, well, Vigo, what, what do you mean by yes. serious divergence? Well, you, you only have to look at uh, the fact that there have been coups in this country, and of course we know uh, France and Western partners have very, are very much strongly condemned th these coups. And also because uh, when you even look at the coups, uh, the immediate security policy or at least, uh, approach is to align with, with, it, with a different uh, player, a preferred partner, which is, which is Russia. So, of course, in the, in the context of the Ukraine war and serious uh, you know, uh, grievances between the West and Russia, it is very much uh, unthinkable to expect that France would want to collaborate with the government that employs the services of of a Russian mercenaries or even work directly with, with, this, with this government of Russia. Okay. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. President Ibrahim Traoré has issued a strong response to General Lecointre's proposal, emphasizing the need for Burkina Faso and other African nations to prepare for a high-intensity war of decolonization. Traoré's message is clear, the fight is not just against terrorism, but against any attempts to reassert foreign control. He has called for unity among his people, urging them to resolve internal conflicts and focus on the external threats posed by potential recolonization efforts. Traoré's speech underscores the importance of vigilance, preparation, and strategic planning in defending their sovereignty. In his address to the nation, President Traoré outlined a comprehensive strategy to counter the proposed reinvasion. He emphasized strengthening the military through enhanced training, better equipment, and fostering a sense of duty and patriotism among the troops. Traoré also highlighted the importance of economic resilience, focusing on diversifying the economy and reducing dependency on foreign aid and investments. This approach aims to build a self-sufficient nation capable of withstanding external pressures. Traoré's call to action extends beyond the military and economic spheres. He has urged his citizens to foster a culture of vigilance and national pride. This involves promoting education and awareness about the historical context of colonialism and the ongoing threats to their sovereignty. Traoré believes that a well-informed and united populace is essential for long-term resistance. He has also stressed the need for regional alliances, encouraging neighboring countries to form a united front against any foreign intervention. The president's message has resonated deeply within Burkina Faso and beyond. His call for unity and resilience has sparked a renewed sense of purpose among the people. Grassroots movements and civil society organizations have rallied behind Traoré, organizing campaigns and initiatives to support the government's efforts. This collective mobilization reflects a broader movement across the continent to resist external interference and reclaim their destinies. Traoré's response also includes a diplomatic component. He has reached out to international allies and organizations, seeking support for Burkina Faso's sovereignty and independence. By building a coalition of supportive nations and leveraging international platforms, Traoré aims to counter the narrative that foreign intervention is necessary or beneficial. This diplomatic effort highlights the importance of global solidarity in the fight against recolonization. The president's emphasis on internal unity is particularly significant. He has called for the resolution of internal conflicts and divisions, recognizing that a fractured nation is more vulnerable to external threats. Traoré's administration is working to address grudges and promote social cohesion, ensuring that all citizens feel included in the nation's journey toward independence. This approach to resistance highlights the interconnectedness of military, economic, social, and diplomatic strategies in securing sovereignty. The call to action from President Traoré resonates deeply within Burkina Faso and beyond. It highlights a broader movement across the continent to resist external interference and reclaim their destinies. Now, while Traoré has cried us, what strategies are being employed by Burkina Faso to ensure a sustainable resistance against recolonization? 
President Traoré's administration is focusing on several key strategies to ensure sustainable resistance. Firstly, they are strengthening the military by enhancing training programs, upgrading equipment, and fostering a sense of duty and patriotism among the troops. Traoré also highlighted the importance of economic resilience, focusing on diversifying the economy and reducing dependency on foreign aid and investments that come with strings attached. This approach aims to build a self-sufficient nation capable of withstanding external pressures. The military strategy involves comprehensive reforms to build a robust defense system. This includes modernizing equipment, improving logistical support, and enhancing intelligence capabilities. By creating a well-equipped and highly trained military, Burkina Faso aims to deter any potential aggressors and effectively respond to security threats. Additionally, the administration is fostering partnerships with neighboring countries to create a regional security network, ensuring a coordinated response to any external threats. Economic resilience is another cornerstone of Traoré's strategy. The government is investing in key sectors such as agriculture, mining, and manufacturing to reduce dependency on foreign investments. By developing local industries and promoting entrepreneurship, Burkina Faso aims to create a self-sustaining economy that can withstand external shocks. The administration is also focusing on improving infrastructure, such as transportation and energy, to support economic growth and enhance the quality of life for its citizens. Social cohesion is a critical aspect of the resistance strategy. Traoré's administration is working to address internal conflicts and promote unity among different ethnic and social groups. This involves implementing policies that ensure equitable distribution of resources and opportunities, fostering dialogue and reconciliation, and promoting inclusive governance. By building a cohesive society, Burkina Faso aims to create a strong internal front against external threats and ensure long-term stability. Education and awareness are also central to the resistance strategy. The government is investing in education to build an informed and empowered citizenry. This includes revising curricula to include the history of colonialism and the importance of sovereignty, promoting critical thinking, and encouraging civic engagement. By fostering a sense of national pride and responsibility, the administration aims to create a population that is vigilant and committed to defending their independence. Diplomatically, Burkina Faso is strengthening its international alliances to garner support for its sovereignty and resistance efforts. Traoré is actively engaging with the African Union, United Nations, and other international bodies to highlight the threats posed by recolonization and to seek solidarity and support. By building a coalition of supportive nations, Burkina Faso aims to counterbalance the influence of former colonial powers and ensure a fair and just international order. While we know the African nations have boldly rejected Western control, why has France made a new plan? France simply can't let African nations move away from its exploitation. The relationship between France and its former colonies has long been characterized by economic dependency and strategic control, ensuring that French interests are prioritized at the expense of African development. The expulsion of French forces from countries like Burkina Faso, Mali, and Chad has been a significant blow to France's influence in the region. However, the desire to exploit Africa's rich resources and strategic positions persists. France's new plan, spearheaded by General Francois Lecointre, reflects a desperate attempt to regain control and influence over its former colonies. The proposal involves a strategic reinvasion under the pretext of combating terrorism and stabilizing the region. By deploying European troops, establishing military bases, and implementing economic reforms supervised by European experts, France aims to reassert its dominance and secure access to valuable resources such as gold, uranium, and oil. This strategy indicates a shift towards more sophisticated methods of control, leveraging military and economic power to re-establish influence. However, President Ibrahim Traoré's resolute response makes it clear that France's ambitions will face staunch resistance. Traoré's emphasis on preparing for a high-intensity war of decolonization and his call for unity among African nations signal that any attempts at recolonization will be met with formidable opposition. The resolve of African leaders and citizens alike to protect their sovereignty and independence suggests that France's plan is unlikely to succeed in the face of such determined resistance. What can France do now?
given that real African leaders won't welcome their intervention? With genuine African leaders like President Ibrahim Traoré firmly rejecting any notion of recolonization, France finds itself at a crossroads. The options available to France are limited, and each comes with significant risks and potential backlash. Experts suggest that in this scenario, France might resort to either power or financial incentives to re-establish influence. However, any leader who would welcome France under these conditions is likely to be perceived either as a puppet or as acting under duress. So, where might France find acceptance, and what are the implications? France might offer substantial economic aid and investment packages to nations willing to align with its interests. This could include infrastructure projects, educational programs, and development grants. However, such financial incentives come with strings attached, often leading to increased economic dependency and loss of sovereignty. Another approach could be offering debt relief or favorable financial terms for loans. Countries struggling with economic instability might find these offers tempting, but the long-term consequences could include deeper economic ties and influence over national policies. France might also consider direct military interventions under the pretext of combating terrorism or maintaining regional stability. This approach is fraught with risks, as it is likely to provoke strong resistance from local populations and governments, potentially leading to prolonged conflicts. Another tactic could involve supporting local militias or opposition groups to destabilize governments that resist French influence. This strategy aims to create chaos, which can then be used as a justification for intervention. However, it can lead to significant humanitarian crises and further destabilization of the region. Not just this, France could leverage its alliances within the European Union, NATO, and other international organizations to apply diplomatic pressure on African nations. This could involve lobbying for sanctions against uncooperative governments or pushing for international resolutions that justify intervention. Or it might increase its soft power efforts, promoting cultural exchanges, educational programs, and media campaigns to sway public opinion in Africa. While this approach is less aggressive, it takes longer to yield tangible results and may not be sufficient to counter strong anti-colonial sentiments. It might try to identify and support leaders who are willing to act as proxies for French interests. These leaders could be installed through political maneuvering or outright manipulation of electoral processes. However, such leaders would likely face significant opposition from their people and could struggle to maintain legitimacy. In some cases, leaders might be coerced into alliances through threats or economic pressure. This approach is inherently unstable, as it relies on fear and coercion rather than genuine cooperation. Experts argue that any leader welcoming France under these conditions is likely to be seen as a puppet or as being forced into cooperation. This perception can lead to internal unrest, weakening the leader's position and potentially leading to their downfall. The legitimacy of such leaders would be constantly questioned, making it difficult for them to govern effectively. France might find acceptance in countries experiencing severe economic crises or political instability, where the immediate need for aid and support could overshadow long-term considerations of sovereignty and independence. Nations with weaker leadership structures or those heavily indebted to France might also be more susceptible to such overtures. However, the acceptance in these cases would likely be precarious and short-lived, as popular sentiment in Africa increasingly favors genuine independence and self-determination. In the end, General Le Coantre's proposal for a renewed European commitment to Africa has reignited the flames of resistance among African nations. The battle for Africa's independence is far from over. It requires determination, strategic planning, and the collective effort of both the people on the ground and the diaspora. As Burkina Faso and its allies prepare for the challenges ahead, their resolve serves as a beacon of hope for a future where Africa can stand tall and sovereign, free from the shadows of its colonial past. Do you think any nation will welcome France? What is France even planning for? Will this be sustainable? Let us know in the comments section. Do you think France can achieve anything be mapping out a plan? Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If so, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, the black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching.
and until the next video, stay tuned.